Welcome back to the CCNA Cisco NetAcad Switching, Routing and Wireless Essentials lecture series. If you are interested in the previous lectures, I will leave a link in the description for the playlist. In my last lecture, we cover VLANs, trunks and how we can configure them. Today, we will be focusing on module number 4, which is Inter-VLAN Routing. In this lecture, we will learn about how we can troubleshoot inter-VLAN routing on layer 3 devices. We will cover inter-VLAN routing operation, router on a stick, inter-VLAN routing, inter-VLAN routing using layer 3 switches and how we can troubleshoot inter-VLAN routing. Just like our previous module, this module also has some hands-on labs associated with our topics. And I again, um, we will be going through them as a lecture series for now. And we will post those labs onto my YouTube channel later. Inter-VLAN routing operation. What is inter-VLAN routing? VLANs are used to segment switch layer 2 networks for a variety of reasons. We learned that in our previous lecture. So regardless of the reason, host in one VLAN cannot communicate with host in another VLAN unless there is a router or a layer 3 switch to provide routing services. Because remember, in our previous lecture we learned that when we use VLANs, what we are basically doing is breaking down your broadcast domain. So by using VLANs, we are separating all of your devices within each of those VLANs into separate broadcast domains. Inter-VLAN routing is the process of forwarding network traffic from one VLAN to another. In other words, one VLAN broadcast domain to another VLAN broadcast domain. There are three inter-VLAN routing options. The legacy inter-VLAN routing, which is the legacy solution and it does not scale very well with the larger uh, scale uh, um, networks or when you have to expand your network. The router on a stick option, this is an acceptable solution for a small to medium sized network but may not be a good idea for a large scale networks. And layer 3 switch, uh, using switch virtual interfaces, in other words layer 3 switch with SVIs and this is the most scalable solution for medium to large organizations. However, in my opinion, uh, if you are implementing a network even for a smaller organization, I would actually go with the layer 3 switch using SVIs because that is the most scalable solution out of all these three options. So let's look at the legacy inter-VLAN routing. The first inter-VLAN routing solution relied on using a router with multiple Ethernet interfaces. Each router interface was connected to a switch port in different VLANs. The router interfaces serve as the default gateways to local host on the VLAN subnet. The legacy VLAN routing using physical interfaces works but it has a significant limitation. It is not reasonably scalable because routers have a limited number of physical interfaces. So in other words, the legacy VLAN routing uses the physical interface of the router associated with the VLANs to communicate. So therefore, the number of physical ports in that router will limit how many inter-VLAN routing uh, networks that you can do. Requiring one physical router interface per VLAN gonna result therefore you know exhaustion of those uh, physical ports and the capa of the capacity of the router right so basically every vlan that you are trying to do inter vlan routing must have a specific physical port associated with that on the router note this method of inter vlan routing is no longer implemented in switch networks as it includes for uh, explanation purposes only. So in other words, in this particular course, the only reason why we are talking about the inter-VLAN routing is just to educate you on the fact that it, this used to exist, but in most networks, almost never, we never implement the legacy inter-VLAN routing. Router on a stick inter-VLAN routing. So the route on a stick inter-VLAN routing method overcomes the limitation of legacy inter-VLAN routing method 
It only requires one physical Ethernet interface to route traffic between multiple VLANs on a network. So unlike the previous legacy method, this one we only need one physical Ethernet interface, but you can have multiple VLANs routing through that. A Cisco IOS router Ethernet interface is configured as an 802.1Q or 1Q trunk, also known as, and connected to a trunk port on layer 2 switch. Specifically, the router interface is configured using sub-interfaces to identify routable VLANs. So basically you have one single inter physical interface, but when you add those sub-interfaces within that physical interface, you can have multiple VLANs uh, running through that one single physical interface. The configured sub-interfaces are software-based virtual interfaces. Each is associated with a single physical uh, Ethernet interface. So that means because we are only using one physical interface of the router, the rest of it are sub-interfaces that are virtually created. So the sub-interfaces are configured in a software on a router. Each sub-interface is independently configured with an IP address and VLAN assignment. Sub-interfaces are configured for different subnets that correspond to their VLAN uh, assignment. And this facilitates logical routing. So Physically, we only have one interface, but logically we're gonna have many interfaces because of the software-based uh, sub-interfaces. When VLAN tag traffic enters the router interface, it is forward to the VLAN sub-interface. After a routing decision is made based on the destination IP network address, the router determines the exit interface for the traffic. If the exit interface is configured as an 802.1Q sub-interface, the data frames are VLAN tag with the new VLAN and sent back out the physical interface. And please note, the route on a stick method of inter-VLAN routing does not scale beyond about 50 VLANs. So after 50 VLANs, you probably, you, you will run out of the virtual interfaces associated with that physical interface and therefore it's not gonna, uh, you know, scale very well. Inter-VLAN routing on a layer three switch. So most modern method uh, that we use for inter-VLAN routing is a use of layer three switches. So how that gonna work is that the layer three switches and switch virtual interfaces, SVI, are used to perform this task. And SVI is a virtual interface that is configured on a layer three switch and uh, that will facilitate the inter-VLAN routing. And please note, a layer three switch is also called a multi-layer switch as it operates at layer two and layer three level. However, this course, we only use the term layer three switch. So it may be referred to as multi-layer switch in other uh, course materials and other documentations. But in this course, we will be always calling this as a layer three switch. And we will discuss this in a little bit more detail in the next slide, uh, but for now, uh, you, uh, if you want to know the difference between a layer two switch, such as this one and a layer three switch, you could think of it as layer three switch is very similar to that of a router, but not a router. So that's how I look at it when I first learn about layer three switches. It's like a router because it can do a lot of things close to what the router can do, but it is not really a router. So that's how I look at the layer three switches. So inter-VLANs uh, SVIs are created the same way the management VLAN interface is configured on those layer three switches. The SVI is created for a VLAN that exists on the switch. Although virtual, the SVI performs the same function for the VLANs as a router interface would. See, this is why I look at the layer three switches similar to that of a router because it would perform the similar function or same functions as the VLANs on a router interface. Specifically, it provides layer three processing for packets that are sent to or from all switch ports associated with that VLAN. So as opposed to layer two switches, the layer three switches provide layer three processing for packets that are sent to or from a switch port associated with VLANs. 
There are advantages of layer, uh, using layer 3 switches for interwheel and routing. They include uh, they are much faster than router on a stick because everything is hardware switch and routed. There is no need for external links from switch to the router uh, for routing. They, uh, they are not limited to one link because layer 2 uh, ether channels can be used as trunk links between the switches to increase bandwidth. And I will cover what are ether channels and how ether channels work uh, later. For now, just remember that the they are not limited to one link uh, because of the layer two ether channels can be used as trunk links. Latency is much lower because data does not need to leave the switch in order to be routed to a different network. The switch can do the uh, routing itself because it's a layer three switch. They are more commonly developed, uh, sorry, they are more commonly deployed in uh, campus uh, land than routers. So if you have a large scale campus, such as University of Calgary or SAIT, for example, and you have multiple people accessing the networks and you have a whole bunch of uh, VLANs created within that campus, you have the option of using routers or layer three switches for inter-VLAN routing, but in most cases, most people, most network engineers would use layer three switches uh, for this large scale network as opposed to using routers. The only disadvantage is that the layer three switches are more expensive compared to layer two switches if you look at the pricing for those devices. Router on a stick inter-VLAN routing. So route on a stick scenario um, in here is shown on the right hand side on this diagram. So in this figure, the R1 gigabit ethernet 001 interface is connected to the S1 fast ethernet 05 port. So if you look at this R1, it, we have the G001 and it is connected to F05 on the switch one. The S1 Ethernet 01 port is connected to S2 using the fast Ethernet port 01. So F01 is connected to the switch 2 via F01 of that switch uh, uh, on, the, on the other side with that link. These are trunk links that are required to forward traffic within and between VLANs. So these two links, the link between the R1 and S1 and the link between the S1 and the S2 are trunk links. Remember we learned about VLAN trunking on our previous lecture. So if you don't remember what are trunk links and how they operate and how you can configure uh, VLAN trunking, you can actually check my previous uh, lecture. To route between VLANs, the R1 gigabit ethernet 001, which is this port, interface is logically divided into three sub interfaces as shown in the table. So in, if you look at this table, we have this R1 and we have G001. And with this dot, what it's indicating is basically we have sub interfaces. So anything comes after this dot here is a sub interface. So for example, G001 is a physical interface and we have the same physical interface here and we have sub interfaces 10, 20 and 30. And we have associated those sub interfaces with VLAN 10, 20, and 99. And also notice that the sub interface number doesn't need to be correspond to the VLAN number. So you can have sub interface one associated with VLAN 10, sub interface 20 associated with VLAN 100, or whatever you like. For example, in here, this sub interface uh, 30 is associated with VLAN 99, right? So that's what's shown here. So in this case, we have divided the sub uh, the interface into three sub interfaces and we have associated 10, 20 and 99. This table is also showing the three VLANs that will be configured on those switches. So we have the VLAN 192.168.10.1 and 192.168.20.1 and 192.168.99.1. They are all on slash 24 uh, subnets. So assume that R1, S1 and S2 have in initial basic configurations. So we have the R1, R S S1 and S2 with the initial basic configuration. 
Currently, the PC1 and PC2 cannot ping each other because they are on separate networks. See, so the PC1 is on VLAN 10 with the 192.168.10.10, but the PC2 is in on VLAN 20 on 192.168.20.10. So now this is on a different subnet, 20.10 as opposed to 10.10, .10, and they are on two different VLANs, so they won't be able to ping each other. So only S1 and S2 can ping each other. So S1 and S2 can ping each other, but they are unreachable by PC1 or PC2 because they are also on different networks. Because S1 on VLAN 10 and S2 is on um, you know different network, it can't you know it can't. Um, you know, it, the, these PCs won't still be able to communicate across these switches. So now we need to enable the communication between these two PCs. So to enable devices to ping each other, the switches must be configured with VLANs and trunking, and the router must be configured for inter-VLAN routing. So if you don't do the inter-VLAN routing here, because VLANs are br uh, breaking down the broadcast domain, the VLAN 10 devices, in this case PC1, won't be able to reach the PC2, which is on the, the on a separate VLAN. Again, it probably not gonna make sense by just reading out this slide. I will go through this scenario on an actual lab demo and post to my YouTube channel, then you will understand how it exactly works. If you do have access to the Cisco Netacad uh, materials either through your academic institution or directly through Cisco please go ahead and download the S1 VLAN and uh, trunking configuration um, the you know the activity and do them uh, as you do them you will get to learn how those configuration that we just covered works but however if you do not have access to them I will try to find a copy of it and post it to my um, sanuji.com website and I might even do a video on how to uh, do these um, steps because these are very important uh, hands-on steps that you should be familiar with. S2 VLAN and trunking configuration. So in that diagram we look at uh, the configuration um, for S1 and S2 uh, in briefly on that one single page. In here, the Cisco has provided to us a very brief um, summary of uh, how you can configure that S2 switch. So if you go back to the previous slide, so here we have the S2 switch right here. So this is the one we will be configuring right here on this screen. So if you look at the S2 switch, we have the VLAN 10. So uh, we have, um, you know, enter into the VLAN 10 configuration mode and we're going to name it as VLAN 10 because it's convenient and easy for humans to read. And we're going to create the VLAN 20 and we're going to name the VLAN 20 as VLAN, you know, LAN 20. And we're going to create VLAN 99. So now we have created three VLANs we need, which is VLAN 10, 20, and 99. And we have conveniently named them so it is easy for humans, network engineers and technicians like you and I can identify them. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to enter into those uh, VLANs and configure some items. So in this case, we are entering the uh, VLAN 99 and we're going to enter the IP address. So we have the IP address and the subnet mask associated with it. And we're gonna enter the command no shut so that it will be, it will be administratively turned up or turned on by, uh, in this uh, switch. And then we're gonna give the default, default gateway because remember, you need to have a default gateway IP address if you were to use this management interface um, uh, remotely, especially if remotely. Otherwise, you may be able to access this management interface internally, but won't be able to access uh, through inter-VLAN routing as well as uh, remotely. So therefore, we give a default gateway IP address, which is going to be the IP address of the port that is you know connected to, right? The, 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 the interface, the default gateway port IP address. Then uh, we have the interface FA018, and we're going to make it into access mode and we're going to put it into the VLAN that is associated with that. In this case, it's going to be the VLAN 20. And again, we're going to issue the command no shut. And then it's the same goes for uh, the other interfaces uh, shown here, like a similar configurations. Again, 
if you just go through this, it's pr probably going to be confusing to you and I won't blame you. So what I'm going to do, I will do a video on this and how we can configure them uh, on a separate video and post to my YouTube channel. I'm, I know I'm repeating this comment over and over and over because reason for that is you may be watching my lectures and going through, oh wow, you know, it's so complicated and confusing. That because of I will, uh, you know, post these videos later uh, separately so that it won't get cluttered in here. R1 sub interface configuration. So remember on the route on a stick that uh, diagram that we look at, we have to create those sub interfaces associated with that physical interface of that router. So the router on a stick method requires you to create those sub interfaces for each VLAN to be routed. If you do not create them, it doesn't work. And on my next uh, screen, I will show you a, a screenshot of uh, some of those configurations. So a sub interface is created using the interface command. Uh, and then you're gonna give the interface ID and the sub interface ID. So you use the Cisco Cis Cis interface command and then we have the interface ID and the sub interface ID in the global uh, configuration mode. The sub interface syntax is the physical interface followed by the period and a sub interface number. Although not required, it is customary to match the sub interface number with the VLAN number. Remember I mentioned before, you can actually create a sub interface with dot 10 and have a VLAN 100, but typically, uh, to make it easier for bookkeeping kind of thing, you know, to make it easier for documentation, if you create a dot ten sub interface, we typically associate it with VLAN ten. So if you have a VLAN fifty, you're gonna create. We typically create a dot fifty sub interface, and then associated that with VLAN fifty. Each sub interface is then configured with the following two commands, which is encapsulation.1q and the IP address commands. So the encapsulation.1q with the VLAN ID, the native VLAN, uh, configures the sub interface to respond to 802.1q. Remember IEEE 802.1q encapsulation uh, methodology, which is used in the VLAN routing and VLAN uh, systems. So that, that's what we are telling here. So we are telling encapsulation.1q command will make sure that the sub interface will respond to 802.1q encapsulated traffic from specific VLAN ID. If you do not enter this command, your VLAN routing not gonna work because it doesn't know uh, that it needs to use 802.1q encapsulation. The native keyword uh, is um, a native keyword option is uh, only appended to set the native VLAN to something other than VLAN one. So what we're gonna do is basically you're gonna enter encapsulation dot one Q and we're gonna give a VLAN ID other than the VLAN one because that's the default native VLAN and that what it's gonna do with the the native command. The IP address command where IP address, where you put the IP address and the subnet mask, for example, IP address 192.168.1.5, then space 255.255.255.0, that would give the IP address and the subnet mask. So you enter the IP address um, command here, and then you enter the IP address here and the subnet here. And this command configures the IPv4 address for the subnet uh, sub interface. And this address typically serves as the default gateway for the identified VLAN. Again, I will go through all of this on my live lab demo as well as my next screen. So you had to repeat this process for each VLAN to be routed. So that's what you need to remember. So I will go through them. I will go through repeating them uh, on a live video on a lab demonstration. But for now, just remember these are important commands that you should be familiar with for your lab exams. Each router sub interface must be assigned an IP address on a unique subnet for routing to occur. When all sub interfaces have been created and enabled uh, in the system, you need to make sure you enable the physical interface using the no shutdown interface command. And if the physical interface is disabled, all sub interfaces associated with that physical interface will be disabled. So for example, if you have G001, 
and then you have create a sub interface as g001.10.20.30 but even though you have everything configured on those sub interfaces if the g001 uh, physical interface is uh, shut off all of the inter sub interfaces associated with that physical interface will be shut off so you need to make sure that you uh, issue the no shutdown command on your cisco switch so in here we have an example of the r1 g001 sub interfaces uh, configuration so on the right hand side we have the interface g001 and then dot 10 indicate that we are entering the configuration mode of the sub interface 10 associated with the physical interface g001 and we have a you know description in it here uh, we have the vlan 10 and we have encapsulation dot one q and 10 so 10 here is that vlan 10 so this is basically saying hey we're going to use the encapsulation dot one q and we're going to associate uh, this dot uh, 10 um, sub interface with the vlan 10 here and then we're going to issue the ip address command so remember i mentioned as you go through these courses you will learn a lot of shortcuts so the command for entering the ip address is ip address but in this example cisco has used the short form so we enter ip add and then you can enter your ip address and subnet mask you don't need to enter the ip address the entire command so, so you will learn about this as you go through uh, these courses and you become network engineers and network uh, technicians you will be using a lot of these short commands so in this case we enter ip add and we have the ip address and the associated subnet mask and you exit out of that uh, interface and we go into the next interface and again this is a sub interface and that's why we have a dot 20 here and it is a same physical interface that's why we have g001 the same one and we do the same thing and the associated ip addresses over and over until we are done with our sub interfaces and finally to turn these interfaces uh, live or turn back on what we do actually we go into the main interface the physical interface so as you can see we use int g001 or you can enter the complete command here interface g001 and we're gonna give a description just like the sub interfaces we can give a description this is an optional command um, uh, in this case we call it trunk link to s1 which is a helpful description for humans and then we're gonna say no shut and that will bring all those interfaces back online and you can see them coming online down here the description command is optional as i mentioned before you don't need to enter anything in the description if you don't want to but it is the industry practice to enter a useful description especially so that the next text technician or engineer who will be looking at your configurations or you come back to this switch years later or months later that you have configured and you're looking at this uh, information it is easy for you to pick out what you have done in here so that's why we enter the description this description has no value in inter vlan routing or uh, network systems so basically whether you have enter gibberish in here like no no meaning things here or whatever you enter here it has no meaning however everything else in here does have an impact so for example encapsulation dot one q if you put here 20 this can associate it with vlan 20 instead of vlan 10 so it does have an impact but if you put it in description gateway for vlan 20 here by mistake but it is actually encapsulating the dot one q at vlan 10 yeah it will work fine because it's just the description is wrong but the encapsulation information is correct right so that's what something uh, some student get uh, tripped on um i seen some cisco exams they give you a screenshot similar to this and they would ask you tell me something wrong with this configuration and typically they have some ip address incorrect or something like that the interface description it doesn't really matter so that's what you need to remember so how do you verify connectivity between pc1 and pc2 
So the easiest way to verify a connectivity, as I have mentioned and gone through this before with our ping um, lecture, uh, lecture on the introduction to networks lecture series is with a simple ping. So the easiest way to verify connectivity between any devices in a network is a simple ping command unless the ICMP packets are blocked by a firewall or a security policy you should be able to perform the ping command. So the router on a stick configuration is complete after the switch trunk and the router sub interfaces have been configured. The configuration can be verified uh, between the host and routers and switches. So from host A, uh, sorry from a host very, to verify the connectivity, as I mentioned, it is very use, easy to use the ping command. Um, and if the ping command fails, at that point, you can use uh, other commands and other methodologies to uh, figure out, uh, you know, if anything is wrong. Uh, in uh, Windows machines, you can use IP config to figure out what is the IP address of the computer. Uh, so if you run IP config, you will be able to figure out what IP address associated with that computer. So you can use to verify that uh, you are pinging the correct IP if you have access to the other end device. Next, you can use the ping command to verify the PC2 and P uh, S1. And all of these are shown uh, right here. If the ping command fail, you can use like the trace route command and other commands that we have covered in my previous lectures. So in addition to using ping between devices, there are some show commands that can be used to verify and troubleshoot router on a stick configurations. So if you are uh, verifying route on a stick inter VLAN routing, you can use show IP route, show IP interface brief, show interfaces and show interfaces trunk commands. It's not just on route on a stick, but also other um, you know, VLAN configurations, you can use these commands. Again, I will go through them extensively on a live video lab demonstration later, sometimes next week. Configure router on a stick inter VLAN routing. So this is a really good packet tracer activity available through your Cisco NetAcad uh, or through your academic institution. However, if you do not have access to it, as I mentioned before, I will try to get a copy of that and post to my website so you can go ahead and do them. And again, I will do a live video demonstration of these labs uh, later down the, uh, you know, later down the time, right? Same here, there is a Cisco packet tracer file called configure router on a stick inter VLAN routing. I will go through them on a separate video. If you do have access to these lab material, please go ahead and do them now. If not, I will try to find a copy and post it on my, onto my site. Inter VLAN routing using layer three switches. Inter VLAN routing using the router on a stick method is simple to implement for a small to medium sized organization. However, a large enterprises require a faster, much more scalable method to provide inter VLAN routing. Remember I mentioned that layer three switch inter VLAN routing is the most scalable option that we have out of the three options we discussed earlier, like briefly went over. So this is what it's talking about. So the enterprise campus lands use layer three switches to provide inter VLAN routing. The layer three switches use hardware based switching to achieve high packet processing rates than routers. And the layer three switches can also commonly be implemented in enterprises uh, distribution layer wiring closets. So that's, those are the very key advantages of layer three switching. It provide a very high packet processing rates than routers. So the capabilities of layer three uh, switches also include the route from one VLAN to another using multiple switch virtual interfaces, also known as SVIs. It can, they can convert a layer two switch port to a layer three interface. They are known as a routed port. A routed port is similar to a physical interface on a Cisco IS, so, uh, so iOS uh, router. So that's another key feature of the layer three switches. To provide inter VLAN routing, layer three switches use SVIs or the virtual interfaces and those SVIs are configured using the same interface VLAN command 
that we use in the management SVIs on layer two switches. So a layer three switch uh, SVI must be created for uh, each of the routable VLANs. So a layer three SVI must be created for each of the routable VLANs. So there are multiple advantages of using layer three switches uh, for inter VLAN routing. And for your exams and quizzes, this is a really good slide that you should remember and you should understand because these do show up on your quizzes and exams. So what are the advantages, major advantages of layer three switches? And you should be able to describe them as given here. Layer three switch scenario. So we have this um, diagram, this uh, network diagram on the right hand side provided to us by Cisco. And in this figure, we have a layer three switch here. It's called the D1 switch right here. And it is connected to two hosts on different VLANs. So in this one has a VLAN 10 and this one has a VLAN 20. PC1 with the VLAN 10 and the PC2 with the VLAN 20 have also different subnet as well. This one has 10.10 .10 and this is 20.10. The layer three switch will provide the inter VLAN routing services to the two hosts. So it will actually providing inter VLAN routing between these two, even though they are on two different VLANs. So in the using the same diagram here, um, you need to complete the following steps to configure the S1 with the VLANs uh, and trunking. So what we need to do here is in for the first step is to create the VLANs. So in, in this example, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 must be created uh, in, in the switch. And in, in the step two, we need to create the SVI VLAN interfaces. So the IP addresses configured will serve as the default gateway for host in the respective VLANs. So even once you create the SVIs, these virtual interfaces, uh, that it will provide the IP addresses needed for these uh, devices to communicate. The, the gateway address, the, the default gateway IP addresses. The next thing we're gonna do is we have to configure the access ports, assign the appropriate port to the required VLAN. And finally, we need to enable the IP routing by issuing the IP routing global configuration command to allow traffic to be exchanged between the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So basically IP routing command under global configuration will provide that capability. This command must be configured to enable the intervene line routing on layer three switch uh, for IPv4 or otherwise it won't work. Again, uh, there are labs that you should be doing that will go through this process. I will post them separately onto my YouTube channel. So layer three switch intervene line routing verification. Intervene line routing um, using a layer three switch is simpler to configure than a router on a stick method. After the configuration is complete, the configuration can be verified by testing connectivity between the host. Again, we are, have been using ping command to test uh, uh, you know, connectivity since our previous uh, lecture series, the introduction to networks lecture series. So we're gonna use the same method here. So we will be using the ping command and it is a good idea to make sure that you have the right IP address for the host that you are pinging. Uh, you can do that with the Windows machine by running the IP config command on a Linux machine. You can use the IEF config, for example, or IP-A command on Linux machines to verify the IP addresses. And the, the way that we do this um, test is basically sending IP, uh, uh, ICMP packets using the ping command and use those echo uh, replies uh, to verify the connectivity between uh, your inter VLAN routed uh, devices. So if you want to know in depth how ping commands and ICMP commands and echo replies work, please uh, go and check my YouTube video on uh, the ICMP lecture that I have done under the Cisco Introduction to Networks uh, lecture series. Uh, it's already posted on my YouTube channel and you should go ahead and watch them because you should already have an idea, uh, already have the knowledge on how pings and ICMP packets works 
uh, by the time you reach this uh, stage of the uh, series. Routing on a layer 3 switch. If VLANs are to be reachable by other layer 3 devices, then they must be advertised using static or dynamic routing. To enable routing on a layer 3 switch, a routed port must be configured. So that's where the routed port uh, idea come into play. So what is a routed port? So a routed port is created on a layer 3 switch by disabling the switch port feature on a layer 2 port that is connected to another layer 3 device. Specifically, configuring the no switch port command on that interface. Configuration on a layer 2 port converts it into a layer 3 uh, interface. So you can enter the no switch port command on a layer 2 switch that will convert that port on that layer 2 switch into a layer 3 uh, interface. Then the interface can be configured with an IPv4 configuration to connect to a router or another layer 3 switch. So this is an important concept that you should understand uh, because you will be doing this on your labs a lot in this class as well as uh, in the future classes. So make sure that you understand that. So if a VLAN is to be reachable by other layer 3 devices, it must be advertised using the static or dynamic routing and you need to enable the layer 3 switch by using a routed port uh, in order for it to you know communicate properly so make sure you understand that concept so how you do it is by issuing the no switch port uh, in the interface configuration command in uh, layer 2 switches which convert that port into a layer 3 port remember layer 2 switches cannot do layer 3 routing but you can convert a port into a layer th uh, three, um, you know, layer three interface, uh, so that it can communicate with those layer three uh, switches as well as routers. Routing scenario on a layer three switch. So on the right hand side, you have a network uh, that given to us by Cisco, and in here we have that D one. Uh, switch which is a layer 3 switch but now it is connected unlike the previous uh, uh, diagram we had to the R1 which is this device this router R1 and D1 are both in open shortest path first also known as OSPF routing protocol domain uh, what is OSPF uh, well uh, we will cover this in a separate lecture series just for now just know that the r1 and d1 um in the open shortest path first ospf routing uh, protocol assume intervlan has been uh, successfully implemented on d1 the g001 interface of r1 has also been configured and enabled additionally r1 is using ospf to advertise its two networks which is 10.10.10.0 .10 24 and 10.20.20.0 24 so these are two different uh, networks that are being advertised using ospf and now we have a layer 3 switch routing those different vlans across this network but please keep in mind the OSPF routing configuration is covered in another course. So it is an advanced course that I will be covering later on my YouTube channel. It is also part of the Cisco Netacad program. So I will associate those OSPF lectures uh, with the next um, Cisco Netacad uh, lecture series. But for now in this module, the OSPF configuration commands will be given to you in all activities and assignments, you just blindly enter those OSPF commands without understanding how the OSPF is working. So it is not required that you understand the configuration in order to enable OSPF. Um, you know, uh, you know, in the layer three switch, but you need to just enter that command and know that the OSPF is enabled. So how it is enabled and how OSPF handle those packets and switch them uh, and route them, all of those things 
will be covered in a future lecture series. For now, just you need to cover that, uh, you know, by just entering the command. Again, I will go through those uh, lab activities on separate videos and post to my YouTube channel later. And once I do them, I will link them below. So routing configuration on a layer three switch include uh, completing the following uh, steps um, on D1 uh, to route uh, with the R1. So the first step is to configure the routed port. We use the no switch port command to convert the port to a routed port and then assign the IP address and subnet mask, which will enable the port. Uh, enabling, then the, the, then the step two would be the enabling routing. Uh, we use the IP routing in the global configuration command to enable routing. Then we use uh, the config, uh, the, we need to configure the routing uh, in there. So what to do, you, to do that, what we use is we use the appropriate routing method. In this example, it is a single area OSPF version two. Um, and again, I am, you know, I'm just going through these slides I will cover them because other in a real lab live demo because otherwise this probably not gonna make any sense to you. So as I mentioned before, we're gonna run through the show IP route command and ping commands to verify the connectivity and configurations. Again, I will go through them later on a separate video for now. Just remember, you know, these are the steps you need to take uh, for your lab activities if you are following through as we follow through these courses. So. If you have access to your Cisco NetAcad or your academic institution lab documentations, please go ahead and download the Cisco Packet Tracer file called configure layer three switching and inter VLAN routing and do them. However, if you do not have access to these files, I will make sure to post them on my YouTube channel and my website and I will go through them on a live video and post them so you can understand them. Troubleshoot inter VLAN routing. Common inter VLAN uh, issues. So there are some common issues that we often see as network engineers and technicians. There are a number of reasons why an inter VLAN configuration may not work. All are related to connectivity issues. First thing we should do is to check the physical layer to resolve any issues where a cable might be connected to the wrong port or the cable is not properly connected or cable is damaged. If the connections are correct, then use the list in the table that given here to see uh, you know, if any of these common reasons are the reasons why you're, you are having inter VLAN connectivity issues. So in network troubleshooting or any IT troubleshooting, the very first thing we should always check is the physical layer. It could be a broken a cable, a uh, cable is not connected properly, uh, you are connected to the wrong device, that, you know, all sorts of problems. So that's the first thing you should take care of. If you have optical fiber, fiber optic links, um, there are situations that uh, the fiber or cable may be broken, uh, physically broken, like the, the glass fibers may be broken halfway so it's not fully broken. So it's kind of working, but it's not working. So things like that, you need to figure those things out first. If you are using CAT5 or CAT6 cables, and if you have crimp the end of those cables incorrectly, you know, with the wires are mismatch or the wires are in the wrong, uh, you know, uh, the place, when you do the crimping of the, that, uh, you know, the, the end um, plug, that would also could result in uh, you know inter VLAN routing issues or routing issues in general, uh, I will cover those in a separate lecture series that I will be posting uh, for our structured cabling and cabling uh, you know lectures. But whenever you do troubleshooting, especially with you know inter VLAN routing or any routing issues, the the physical layer that's what I want to drive home here. The physical layer issues need to be taken care of first. So assuming you have done your homework, you have gone through those checklists for physical layer, then we will look at this table with uh, typical inter VLAN issues. 
So those typical issues include missing VLANs. Uh, that means, um, you know, you have not created VLANs on either switches or routers. So you need to make sure you need to have created them. You can recreate them uh, if those VLANs that you think you have created were not there. And ensure that the uh, host port is assigned to the correct VLAN. That's a very important thing. Also, uh, you might have accidentally assigned an incorrect port. And you can verify that using these commands. Switch port trunk, um, sorry, switch trunk port issues. So you need to ensure that trunks are configured correctly and ensure port is a trunk port and it is enabled. And you can do that by verifying, you know, running these commands on the verification. Switch access port issues. So you need to make sure you have assigned the VLAN to access port. You have to make sure that the port is access port and enable and the host is uh, correctly configured uh, on the you know subnet so you can verify that information by running this command router configuration issues router sub interface ipv4 address uh, need to be correctly configured and the router sub uh, interface uh, need to be have the proper vlan identification uh, associated with that and you can check that running these commands if you go through your labs you will be running through this process whenever you run into an issue so make sure you go through those labs then you will get familiar with these commands troubleshoot inter vlan routing scenario so on the right hand side uh, cisco has provided us with the that same um, network diagram we were working on previously so we have the router one here and we have switch one and switch two so the problem uh, will now be covered a little bit on detail so in this topology uh, can be used to uh, for like you know understand uh, the problem that we discussed in the previous slide so we will be going through this uh, in our next slide just remember this is the uh, the network diagram that we are working on for this particular example and these are the sub interfaces and the vlans associated with it and the ip address networks associated with it uh, for these uh, sub uh, the, these uh, VLANs. So on the next slide, we will be looking at uh, how we can troubleshoot a scenario, right? So let's look at a scenario where I'm missing VLANs. An inter-VLAN connectivity issue could be caused by a missing VLAN. The VLAN could be missing if it was not created, it was accidentally deleted, or it is not allowed on the trunk link. Another reason for accidental deletion is that you have created the VLANs but you forgot to save some of the configurations or multiple configurations. Then you reboot your router or the switch. That would result in actually missing a bunch of configurations you have done as well. So when a VLAN is deleted, any ports assigned to that VLAN become inactive. They remain associated with the VLAN uh, and thus inactive until you assign them to a new VLAN or recreate the missing VLAN. Recreation uh, of those missing VLAN would automatically reassign host to it. So remember that recreation of those VLANs will re would automatically assign the host to it. You can use the show interface uh, with the interface ID switch port command to verify the VLAN membership of the port. So in here on the right hand side, Cisco has given us a, an example uh, where they run do show interface. Remember earlier on, on my previous lectures on my YouTube channel, I mentioned to you that you can enter this do at the front if you want to enter a command that is not associated with the configuration mode. So this is exactly what they are doing. In, so now exiting out of this mode, they simply enter do at the front and then the command. In this case, do interface FA06 uh, switch port. And that gave us the information associated with that. And we see the access mode VLAN 10 is currently in inactive. So that's what they're highlighting here. Switch trunk port issues. Another issue for inter-VLAN routing includes misconfigured switch ports, 
In a legacy inter-VLAN solution, this could be cause when the connecting router port is not assigned to a correct VLAN. However, with the router on a stick solution, the most common cause is misconfigured trunk port. So remember that in router on a stick solution, most common problem would be the misconfigured trunk port. Verify that the port connecting to the router is correctly configured as a trunk link using the show interface trunk command. So this is the command we use, show interface trunk. And it is shown here on the bottom of the screen. And if the port is missing from the output, examine the configuration of the port with the show running config interface command to see how the port is configured. So in here it's, it is running the show interface trunk command and that command will list the ports and associated VLANs and how it is configured. Switch access port issues. When a problem is suspected with a switch access port configuration, use the verification commands to examine the configuration and identify the problem. A common indicator of this issue is the PC having the correct IP address configuration. So we have the IP address, subnet mask and default gateway is correctly done. However, being unable to ping its default gateway. So that is a really common issue with the switch access port issue. So you have the IP address, subnet mask and default gateway configured properly and you have verified that it is correct, but you can't ping, right? So what you need to do is the use show VLAN brief, show interface um, switch port, show uh, running config interface command to verify the uh, interface VLAN assignment. So if you look at the right hand side here, Cisco has given us a screenshot of show interface commands that they are describing here. And it shows the access uh, mode VLAN one, and it shows the, uh, the administrative mode in under static access and the operational mode under static access and the switch port is enabled. Again, I will go through these labs on a separate video so they will understand exactly how this works. For now, just remember these commands are very useful commands. Router configuration issues. Router on a stick configuration problems are usually related to sub-interface misconfigurations. Verify the sub-interface status using the show IP interface brief command. Verify which VLANs each of the sub-interfaces is on to do so. The show interfaces command, which is this command, show interfaces command is a useful tool, but it generates a great deal of additional unrequired output. So the command input can be reduced using iOS command filters, which we discussed before using that pipe sign, remember? So we cover that in one of my previous lectures, so we can use one of those filters. In this example, use the include keyword to identify that only lines containing the letters gig, G-I-G, or 802.1Q uh, to, uh, to be displayed on your ISO terminal. So in iOS, sorry, not ISO, so I iOS. So in iOS, remember we have that pipe, uh, some, uh, you know, command. So you can enter that pipe it's because Cisco iOS is similar to Linux and Unix, right? So they have similar pipe commands. So that's what we are using here. So we are using the pipe command to filter out those additional data that we don't need to be displayed on your router or layer three switch. So that's what we are doing here with that pipe command with the show interfaces pipe. And we're gonna filter those with the include and gig um, uh, we are gonna have we only the information that containing gig or uh, 802.1Q will be included in this display. And remember, when I was going through previous lectures, I have mentioned to you that if you are running these commands that would generate a lot of data on your uh, CLI or on your Cisco, you know, um, the command window, you need to be very careful especially on a network that is active 
and you know currently in production if you are working on a in production environment you need to be careful with commands like show interfaces because when this router go through and find all this information and start displaying it it's going to use some of its processing power and memory to do so so if you are running this command on a live network and you don't use this pipe command and you are displaying everything out of that command it will slow down your network and it may result in performance issues or uh, to uh, you know your um, clients so if you have a large company and you are running these commands while the company is operating and the, the company engineer scientists or whatever whoever using the accountants whoever using the network are gonna feel may have an impact on their network connectivity and uh, it will create network congestion so make sure uh, you know when you're running this command that you are not creating performance issues as a result of running these commands without this proper piping of uh, and filtering of your data so be very careful with commands that would generate a lot of data in a live environment because it will have it may have an impact on your end users uh, and the network performance there is a file called troubleshoot inter vlan routing on your cisco netacad you may be able to access through your uh, academic institution as well again if you don't have access to this file i will try to find find it and post it to my um, sanuju.com website so you can go ahead and download them and do them but if you do please go ahead and do it because it will cover all the troubleshooting concept that we have covered in this lecture again there's a lab called troubleshoot inter vlan routing please please if you do have access to this lab go ahead and do them if you do not i will post a copy of it onto my website uh, sometime if i get access to it so you can go ahead and download and do them and this bring us to the end of this lecture and i will go through some information that we have covered so you have a brief overview of everything we covered in this module again there is a packet tracer file called inter vlan routing challenge if you have access to it please do them if you do not i will try to find a copy of it so you can do them there is another packet tracer file called implement inter vlan routing that is a really good lab and that will cover go through almost everything we covered in this lecture when i get a copy of that again i'll post to my website so you can download and go ahead and do them if you do have a copy of that file please do it right now so finally here's a couple of slides on what we have covered in this lecture so in my previous lecture i have covered an overview of vlans in this lecture what we have covered is the inter vlan routing so we learned that the inter vlan routing is the process of forwarding network traffic from one vlan to another vlan and why we do this because we learned in our previous lecture that the vlans would break up the broadcast domain by breaking down your network into separate you know separate pieces using those vlan um, configurations by inter vlan routing what we are doing is making sure those different vlans can communicate uh, um, uh, between each other three options includes uh, that we can use for inter vlan routing are legacy route on a stick and layer 3 switch using uh, virtual interfaces svis to configure a switch with vlans and trunking complete the following steps create and name vlans create the management interface configure access ports and configure trunking ports if you do those items you can configure the vlan uh, and trunking the route on a stick method requires a sub interface to be created for each vlan to be routed a sub interface is created using the interface uh, with the interface id so the interface command interface then you're going to enter the interface id and the, we're going to give the sub interface id in the global configuration mode on cisco switches and routers 
each router sub interface must be assigned an IP address on a unique sub inter subnet for routing to occur. So each sub interface must have an IP address on a unique su subnet in order for routing to occur. When all sub interfaces have been created, the physical interface must be enabled using no shutdown interface configuration command. If you forget to do that and the physical sub interface is shut off, all sub interfaces associated with that sub interface will not work. They all will be shut off because all those sub interfaces are associated with that physical interface. So you need to make sure to run the no shutdown command. All enterprise campuses LANs use layer three switches to provide inter VLAN routing because layer three switches are efficient and they use hardware based switching to achieve higher packet processing rates than routers. So they are very efficient in routing those packets. Capabilities of layer three switches include routing from one VLAN to another using multiple switch virtual interfaces known as SVIs, those are virtual interfaces, and converting a layer two switch port to a layer three interface using the routed port method, right? To provide inter VLAN routing, layer three switches use SVIs, these are virtual interfaces, and SVIs are configured using the same interface VLAN ID command that we use to create the management SVIs on the layer two switches. Remember, SVIs, SVIs are switch virtual interfaces, those are virtual interfaces, and we can use the same command that we use on the layer two on layer three to configure those SVIs. We also learn how we can configure a switch with VLANs and trunking. And you need to do the following steps to do that. So we need to create the VLANs, create the SVI VLAN interfaces, configure access ports and enable IP routing. To enable IP routing on a layer three switch, a routed port must be configured. A routed port is created on a layer three switch by disabling the switch port feature on layer two port that is connected to another layer three device. So remember that. The interface can be configured with an IPv4 configuration to connect to a router or another layer three switch. To configure a layer three switch to route with a router, we follow uh, these steps. So those include the configure the routed port enable routing, configure routing, verify routing, and finally verify the connectivity. So that's how we make sure that the layer three switch can route uh, with the router. There are a number of reasons why an inter VLAN configuration may not work. So that's where the troubleshooting aspects of this class come into play. All are related to connectivity issues, uh, such as missing VLAN switch, uh, um, you know, switch trunk port issues, switch access port issues, and router configuration issues. But please keep in mind, I have, you know, highlight the facts, you need to make sure your physical layer troubleshooting is done before you come to this point. So make sure your cables, your uh, switches, and your uh, devices are properly uh, attached before you start troubleshooting at this level. A VLAN could be missing if it is not created, it was accidentally deleted, or it is not allowed on the trunk link. Another reason why I see why I seen why these things happen, you have configured VLAN and everything is saved, but some other configuration on your Cisco router or switch is not saved because you forgot to run run copy running config, startup config, and then you boot up, reboot the switch or the router, resulting in losing all that configuration. So Make sure that you check all your configurations are saved and nothing is missing. Another issue for inter VLAN routing includes misconfigured switch port, which we went over. And in legacy inter VLAN uh, solution, a misconfigured switch port could be caused when connecting router port is not assigned to the correct VLAN. So make sure that we are assigning those correct VLANs. With a router on a stick solution, the most common cause is misconfigured trunk port. So we cover that. When a problem is suspect, uh, suspected, 
with a switch uh, access port configuration we use the ping command and show interfaces interface id switch port commands to verify the pro those problems and remember the ping command is a very useful command even in introduction to networks lecture series our previous lecture series it is a very useful tool that a lot of network engineers and network technicians from junior level to upper level use router configuration problems with router on a stick configurations are usually related to sub interface misconfigurations remember that so when you have a router configuration problems with the router on a stick configuration usually it has to do with sub interfaces so to verify the sub interface status uh, you can use a show ip interface brief command on cisco switches and routers and that will give you the sub interface information if you like this type of lectures please thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel if you have any questions related to this lecture or previous lectures don't hesitate to reach out to me you can either leave a comment in any of my videos and i will try to get back to you as soon as possible or you can contact me through my website sanuja.com until next time good luck with your studies and make sure to go over all of these items before you try to work on your quiz and all the best and have a nice day